Hello, welcome to another video teaching. My name is Marla and I'm so happy to be here sharing with you today. Today's video is a, is a special one to me just because if you're watching it in real time, today is Good Friday, which is my favorite holiday, Christian holiday of the whole year. And uh, I just can't help but feel moved on this day to just do a video teaching which points us right to the cross because of course that's what we're celebrating on Good Friday. We celebrate the day that God gave his life for us on the cross so that we might have eternal life in heaven. And so that's that's the theme today, uh, all day. I've just been reflecting on it. And so the video teaching is going to be on uh, the cross and, and how Jesus spilled his blood for us. And I do want to tie it in though, of course, to where we are in our video, in our blog post study. And so if you go to injesusname.net, you can catch up to us. We are in the book of Romans. You can subscribe for free. You'll get these videos and the blog post sent to you um, as I'm teaching through the Bible cover to cover. And today, like I said, we're in the book of Romans. And where we are in the book of Romans with Paul, uh, Paul is spending a whole lot of time with us, with the people he's writing to, telling them how being Jewish doesn't matter anymore and um, and how the law of the Jewish people doesn't matter anymore. And so he is really drilling down on this and a lot of it is, is complex language and we're wrestling through it, but um, I want to to just share with you a bit on what Paul is talking about because for some of you, you might be sitting there scratching your head saying, wait a minute, we have just been months and months and months studying how the Jewish people are the chosen people and how they're set aside and how this is really important. And now I'm hearing from Paul that this doesn't matter at all. Why did we spend all these months studying this and why did God spend all this energy uh, getting this message to the Jewish people through the law um, that they were chosen and different and all of that. So I want to go back in time and I want to just uh, point to you, point out to you what we've been seeing through this whole thing, which is what we're calling the scarlet yarn and see how this scarlet yarn, which is the bloodline means something and meant something and um, and so we're not just kind of sitting back saying okay I don't understand why all this is being thrown out right now by Paul and going forward um, all this need to be Jewish <laughs> okay so so let's go back and let's just think that the beginning of all this the scarlet yarn started in the Garden of Eden we had a, um, a curse that was put on the serpent and put on Adam and put on Eve because of the sin that Satan brought to the world through the serpent. But we also had a little glimmer of hope back there and it said that through the seed of a woman was going to come one who crushed the head of the serpent. And that's just the beginning, the little taste of the fact that there's going to be somebody that comes out of this bloodline that is going to defeat Satan. So we're hanging on to that and that's all, you know, that's what we're hanging on to all through the Old Testament study. And we see that the seed has got to go directly to Jesus. That seed is what we followed, the seed of the woman. We followed it right on through the Old Testament. Abraham, well, Noah, Abraham, uh, Isaac, Jacob, and then right into um, Judah and David, right on to Jesus. That is the bloodline that we're, we've been following and using it as, you know, as part of telling the story of Scripture to get to Jesus. When we get to the New Testament, one of the first things, the first thing we see in Matthew 1.1 is a genealogy that shows us the bloodline. The, it's all in the bloodline. The Messiah has to come from Adam and Eve from the beginning. We see more of that genealogy in John. We see it taught we see the genealogy tied right into Adam and Eve. So that is, that's the linchpin of the story of scripture study that Jesus came from Adam and Eve. And all through the Old Testament, that is, is being built up, that, that, that theme, and we're following it. So that is something hugely important, and that doesn't go away. Now, as we were in the Old Testament, we got to see how the Jewish nation was chosen. So we got to see that bloodline turn into a giant nation of people as was promised to Abraham. 
So the bloodline is now um, spread through a nation of people who have been taken out of captivity in Egypt, carried out of captivity by God through Moses, and now they're in the wilderness, and they are a nation who has no idea how to follow God because they've been following the pagan gods in Egypt. And so God gives this nation of people a set of laws. And we studied those laws all throughout Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. We saw law upon law and we recognized that those laws were meant in part, a big part, to keep the Jewish nation holy, separate to make them stand apart from other nations because God was going to use this Jewish nation not only to bring the seed out of, but also to draw people to himself. He really wanted this Jewish nation to look different and act different, and he wanted the pagan people around to take a look and say, wow, look at them, they do things differently, and because of that, God is blessing them, so I want to know about this God. So there were holiness laws to keep the Jewish people separate. There were also laws in there that were teaching them how to follow God, like I said. So the laws were very, very important for keeping them separate and different. So when we get to Romans, <laughs> like I said, we hear Paul saying, nope, it doesn't matter if you're Jewish. It doesn't matter about your bloodline. It doesn't matter about your laws. We can understand how the Jewish people at the time would have rejected that entire scenario. They would have said, Paul, no, we have heard for hundreds of years, thousands of years, that we're chosen. Being Jewish means something, and keeping the law means everything because we are supposed to stay separate and holy. And so it's a it's a it's a tricky, it's a tricky get here. And what we have to know is that something did change, and it changed at the cross. And what I want to do is point to you to the other thing that the law did. And maybe this will show you a little bit about why there's such a radical change and why all of a sudden Paul is saying the law was really just to show us that you couldn't keep the law and being Jewish doesn't matter. Jews and Gentiles are the same. So that concept that the law was just to show us that we can't keep the law as as told by Paul. You never saw that anywhere in the Old Testament, did you? No, not even kind of. In fact, God was saying, you must keep the law, you must keep the law. If you don't keep the law, Jewish people, you're getting kicked out of the land. All your blessings are going to be taken away. He was strictly telling them, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. There was no hint of, and by the way, you're not going to be able to keep it, so you're going to have to trust me. If it was in there, it was shadowed, very shadowed. So the law in no way was being couched to them like something that was a, you know, do it if you want to type of thing. It was absolutely the standard. They had to do it. So the law meant something. And I want you to see the piece of it that ties into the cross. When you look at the law, not only were there all kinds of things in there to keep them holy and to show them how to follow God, but there were all kinds of things in there to show them how to be pure. Lots of different laws about blood. Yes, the blood sacrifices of the animals, but also cleanliness laws about how to, <clears throat> excuse me, not intermingle with other nations, so no blending of the bloodline no uh, eating of certain things, no uh, touching certain things, purity laws, cleanliness laws. And when you start to read them, you start to think, boy, God is really, really interested in keeping this bloodline pure and clean and healthy. So you got to think, this bloodline has got to make it to Jesus. And if these people didn't know how to, first of all, not blend with other nations, there was going to be no hint of Adam and Eve's blood left. It was going to be all jumbled up. He also had to make sure that the bloodline didn't die off. Don't eat certain things that are going to kill you. Don't do certain things that are going to make you sick. The bloodline had to stay intact. And so these laws included these, these things that were going to keep them 
going. There always had to be a healthy, pure Jewish line happening. And so that is what part of the law was meant to do. Keep that bloodline going. Keep them separate. Show them how to follow God. Keep it healthy. Keep it going. And that goes on all through the Old Testament. And honestly, it goes on even when Jesus hits the globe. You see that Jesus, um, yes, he heals some Gentile people, but all in all, he's, he's keeping a distinction. There are Jews and there are Gentiles. I came for the Jews. Separation. He didn't even, even really even go into Gentile areas. He still saw the separation and kept the separation in his mind to a degree. We see that in his language. And so that separation, that bloodline staying different, happened <clears throat> all the way even through Jesus right until the cross. But after the cross, after Jesus accomplishes what he was supposed to do, be the seed that crushed the head of the serpent, after his blood is spilled, well, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? It doesn't matter if the Jewish bloodline is kept pure from Adam and Eve. The, the, the goal line has been crossed. And so after we see the blood of Jesus spilled on the cross on that day, we see everything changes. The rules are changed. The law can be sort of lessened, let's just say, even though it isn't, it's used for a different reason. But we see the law fading back and we see even first thing in Peter in the book of Acts, he sees a vision of blanket comes down three times and he sees different type of animals. And from that vision he gets, oh, it's okay for Jews and Gentiles to blend. He goes to a Gentile's house. He has a meal. He tells them about the gospel and he, oh, he realizes, oh, Jews and Gentiles, they don't have to stay separate. We can be friends. We can hang out. We can, we can touch. We can do all that. That's number one. Then, as I said, we get into the books uh, with, with, in Romans here with Paul, and Paul is saying, Jew and Gentile alike, it doesn't matter. The bloodline doesn't matter. The law doesn't matter. You don't have to keep those laws. The laws don't make you right with God. Only faith in Jesus makes you right with God. No more does the law have to keep the Jewish people clean and pure and healthy because the one who was supposed to come out of the Jewish line already came. It didn't matter anymore. Of course, the Jewish people still matter to God and all people matter to God, but that keeping the bloodline pure and keeping the Jewish line healthy didn't matter because Jesus already came, mission accomplished. And so that is what I see in the radical change after the cross as far as keeping the Jewish bloodline pure and keeping those laws so strict. And why Paul and others <clears throat> are going to come at us with Jew and Gentile alike, it doesn't matter anymore. Because it doesn't. Now everybody's blood is the same blood. And, um, and Jesus has already accomplished his mission. So I hope that you can see that. And I hope that you can understand, even with all that, that the covenanted promises were given to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people still have a giant separate role in God's whole plan, which he has not given up on. The Jewish people right now, they're still separate. There are still pure Jewish people out there who are keeping the laws, who are proud of their Jewishness, who are keeping separate. And the Bible says, and we're going to get to this in Romans, that God is using these Jewish people they're not accepting Jesus as an age, a time of grace. The Jewish people don't see Jesus. They hang on to their law so that other people, Gentile people, can be grafted into the Jewish line and be able to be part of the blessings, the covenanted blessings that are given to the Jewish people. So the Jewish people are still playing a role, and right now they're holding back. We also see in the Bible that right now they're getting very jealous because Gentiles are saying, we believe in the same one true God that you believe in. But meanwhile, the Gentile people are saying that God is three in one. And the Jewish people are saying, no, no, you are destroying our idea of God. He's one in one. And there's a whole jealousy thing happening. And so the Jewish people are being used for that too. They're being stirred up. They're, they're being stirred up to want to go after this, to protect God. 
So there's a dynamic going on that, that still shows there's a, there's a role for the Jewish people now. And we know that God has a, still has a special place in his heart for the Jewish people. He still has more to do, which is why our story of scripture isn't over yet. Our scarlet yarn isn't over yet. When we get to the book of Revelation, we are going to see how God intends to still use, play out, what he intended from the very beginning as far as his chosen nation, the Jewish nation, and getting them to believe. So that's more to come. But I would be remiss if I didn't, in this video, share with you my favorite scripture in the entire Bible, which is found in Romans, which is in Romans 11:5. so too at the present time a remnant has been chosen by grace. I have pure Jewish background, as many of you know, and so I am that remnant, and so are so many others. There are Jewish people right now that are chosen by grace to be able to see Jesus as, as who he is, the Messiah. And so God has been faithful to the Jewish people all the way through. That There's always been some people, including all of the apostles who were Jewish, who see Jewish for what he is. So. We're not to give up on Jewish people. There are some Jewish people that will still receive the message of Christ even before the end of the Age of Grace. And the remnant is still remaining. There's some healthy, still Jewish, pure Jewish line that's still out there. And it's all for a reason. At the, end of, at the end of days, we're going to see God doing a great work of bringing in his Jewish nation, um, along with many others too, um, at, the end of, at the end of days. So... The remnant is still here. We're still out there, you know, we're still out here. Um, there's still Jewish people. They still have a great role in God's plan. And there's still some right now who are coming to faith in Jesus. So the remnant is still alive. And sometimes I think I'm going to get a tattoo that says remnant, maybe in Greek or, or Hebrew or something, just because, um, because I'm, I'm part of that remnant. And it just, it just makes me smile that I was, that I was gifted with the ability to, um, hear and see the truth of Jesus and, uh, be here today to, to talk about him with so many other people. So, um, I thank you so much. And, um, if you are watching this on Good Friday, then I just pray you have a blessed Good Friday, that you, um, you really get to see a different view of the cross and the blood and how everything changed um, for the whole world because of the blood. And um, I hope you have a wonderful Easter and uh, when you get to that day that you just celebrate what the blood did for you and um, how the resurrection just proves that Jesus is who he says he was. Um, you don't rise from the grave if you're not God. And uh, you don't walk around and tell people about it before it happens if you're not God. And that is exactly what Jesus did. He proved that he was God when he um, fulfilled his own prophecy of raising from the grave and walking around and telling people about his great um, accomplishment and his great father. So um, God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. It's in Jesus' name I'm doing it all. Bye now.